So uh, today we will discuss about the PLCC system in substation transmission line protection and basically we will discuss about what, what are the different types of codes in a PLCC, what is the meaning of code 1, code 2, code 3 and why twin channels are used. But we will not go into the depth of the technicalities of PLCC system because we will discuss the complete technical details of PLCC when we discuss about the uh, permissive schemes of transmission line protection. Right now we will discuss only about the twin channels, how the uh, carriers are sent from main one relay at one end to the main one relay of the other end and similarly how the carriers are sent from the main, uh, main two relay of one end to the main two relay of other end. As you are aware that in the last two or three videos we have already discussed about the n minus 1 criteria failure criteria and in this n minus 1 failure criteria the main thing is that whenever there is out of n number of elements if there is a failure of even a single element that single element failure does not hampers the or might not hampers the reliability of protection system so in continuation of that n minus 1 failure criteria this plcc system comes and in this PLCC system, in most of the power grid, twin, ch uh, twin channels are used. Now you are also aware that in our substation when the transmission lines are terminated, the first element is LA followed by CVT, wave trap, line isolator and then the base equipment. This uh, PLCC system, we will not discuss about the wave functioning of wave trap, LMU and different things th that we will cover during the Field, uh, field demonstration. Right now, you know that we have uh, two types of relay or two set of relays, I would rather say, main one and main two. These both relay have exactly same functionalities. These both relay will operate on the same principle. For example, if main one is on distance protection, main two will also be a different, uh, distance protection. Both set, uh, relay will cover the same set of functionalities. In both the relays, we will have same set of outputs. Now, main one relay will generate some carrier depending upon if it is an underreaching scheme or overreaching scheme. It will uh, generate carriers on the basis of zone one or zone two depending upon the setting. Similarly, main two relay will also generate the carriers. Now, these carriers will be routed from substation A to substation B via the PLCC channels. And now, we will see how these are routed. Actually, we have suppose this uh, two relay main one and main two now we have two set of plcc channels at substation a this is plcc channel one and plcc channel two in both these uh, plcc channel there are three codes code one code two and code three generally code one and code two are for permissive schemes and code three is for direct transfer tripping now what is the meaning of permissive and direct tripping that you are already aware basically the permissive uh, carriers are for the tripping permissive carriers are basically for the trippings of transmission line when a particular zone picks up then after receipt of carrier it will uh, issue the trip command by bypassing this uh, zone timer and that we will uh, anyway discuss during this distance protection scheme in the direct transfer tripping schemes whenever the carrier is received at one end from the second end if the carrier is received then it will directly issue the trip command it doesn't see any pickup of any other zones so in our system we, we are using both uh, code 1 and code 2 that is for permissive scheme suppose it is uh, under reaching scheme then main one relay will is, uh, send the carrier after picking up of zone 1 and now main one relay code 1 is connect uh, main one relay uh, there will be two output one output will be connected to channel one code one and second output will be connected to channel two code two mm -hmm. similarly main two relay will also have two outputs one output will be connected to code one of channel two and another to the code one of code two of channel one and this is for the reliability and the next thing is code three code three is because it is for direct tripping only so single code is used for from both or single output is used from both main one and main two relay for one code 
now this PLCC channel of substation A will communicate with this PLCC channel of substation B via the, uh, the physical link that is the CVT, wave trap, LMUs and then HF cables. Now at the second end this code 1 of channel 1, code 2, code 3 of channel 1 these are connected directly similarly uh, for channel 2 and now again the replica of substation A is at the replica uh, substation B that means code 1 of PLCC channel 1 is connected to main 1 and code 2 of channel 1 is connected to main 2 similarly code 2 of channel 1 will be connected to main 2 and code 2 of channel 2 will be connected to main 1 and code 3 will be connected to both main 1 uh, code 3 of channel 1 to main 1 and code 3 of channel 2 to main 2 now why this is done now suppose a condition in which you have a failure of channel 1 that means PLCC channel 1 is not healthy now if main 1 relay or main 2 relay suppose any one relay suppose main 1 relay operates then what happens main 1 relay will send the car uh, carrier or send the code of channel 1 and code 2 of channel 2 but since channel 1 is not healthy so this code will be not transferred to substation B but since uh, channel 2 is healthy so now code 2 uh, from channel 2 will be sent to PLCC channel 2 at remote end and there this code 2 is now connected to main 1 relay of substation B and finally we will have a receipt of carrier in substation B main 1 relay even after failure of one channel likewise you can see if there is a failure of channel 2 then also there will be receipt of carrier in both relays at substation B if there is a failure of main 1 relay then also there will be receipt of carrier if there is a failure of main 2 relay then also there will be a receipt of carrier that means uh, failure of single element does not hampers the clearance of fault now we will see how, what are these codes and how these codes are uh, what are these codes and how these codes we can uh, see from the PLCC channels so we will see uh, this from the PLCC channels now this is uh, one of the PLCC channel uh, for one of the transmission line and if you look at this PLCC channel then this PLCC channel is basically a ABB make 40 watt PLCC channel uh, actually this PLCC channel is 80 watt but most of the PLCC channel is 40 watt PLCC channel and the only difference is that if you see here there are two power supply module uh, one above and another just uh, below that module that means it has two uh, power supply module and it is 80 watt PLC channel but that is of no importance for us right now only important thing is that this is a PLCC channel in this PLCC channel what we have to see when we are analyzing this uh, PLCC codes are three important things first uh, the AGC that is the automatic gain control if this PLCC channel is healthy then uh, in every condition this AGC value must be above 20 and in the range of 20 to 25. Second thing you must always have this ready and guard LED in the green state. If any of these two LED is not in the green state that means this PLCC is not in the healthy condition and last now we have to see what are the meaning of this code. Actually if you see here there are two uh, one buttons mentioned as A, B and similarly there is again one mentioned as AB basically these three cards uh, G4 AA, G4 AC and G4 AC second these are the protection coupler cards that means this connect with the protection uh, protective relays of switch yard or protective relays of the relay room to the PLCC system now in this card if you see here there are two things px and rx this counter px and rx means now at present it is selected as a that means this is uh, suppose this is channel 1 that means channel 1 code 1 transmit counter is 25 and receive counter is 28 that means up to this point the main 1 relay or main 2 relay whatever relay it might be that have operated and through this channel 25 code has been transferred and 28 code has been received through this channel code 1 now if you drop this this is now selected to B and this B means this is code 2 so now through code 2 only one code has been transferred till now and 25 code has been received and this discrepancy might be due to uh, if you see here there is a one reset counter some person might have reset this counter earlier and that's why there is a difference otherwise if all 
everything is perfect then always the code 1 and code 2 will be exactly same now in this uh, second uh, card here you see if it is at c that means it is now uh, displaying the code 3 and here again there are two uh, counters that is tx the number of code transferred for uh, transmitted and number of codes received in code 3 similarly you can see in another panels there will always be three codes actually in this card there is option of fourth code also but at power grid we are using only three codes and at most of the utility they are only using three codes that is two permissive and one direct that's why uh, we, uh, we are using code one code two and code three and we can have all our problems sorted out by using only these three codes only Similarly, we will have the second panel, everything will remain the same in the second panel also and if you look at any other panel then the uh, difference will be nothing and in all panels you will see only the counter from code 1, code 2 and code 3 with some TX and RX values. Mm. Now one more important thing to remember is that if you go into switch yard you will always see that the wave traps are installed only in the two out of the three phases and the reason behind that is this the PLCC system are generally installed in two phases and this is called uh, the phase to phase coupling and why we are using phase to phase coupling and this coupling we will discuss when we will go to a field demonstration how this phase to phase coupling or phase to ground coupling is done basically the simplest idea is that if you are using phase to ground coupling that means if you are using the PLCC channel from only one conductor or through only one phase then what happens suppose there is a fault on that particular phase only that means you are using PLCC through the R phase and if there is a fault in R phase then at that particular time there are chances that in this R phase to ground fault the signal loss will be appreciable and the code might, take, might not get transferred from substation A to substation B. To avoid this condition we generally use phase to phase coupling and in this phase to phase coupling we are using this wave trap, LMU and everything in two different phases, suppose in RY or YB or BR. And now we have the chance that if there is a fault in R phase to ground, that means uh, the whatever the losses in R phase, the signal will be transferred through Y phase path. If there is a fault in Y phase, signal will be transferred through R phase path and if there is a fault in B phase, that means there is no problem. One doubt might keep in your mind that what happens if there is a phase to phase fault? In that case, if there is a phase to phase fault, yes, definitely there are the chances that the signal attenuation might be such a uh, high value that the code might not get transferred from substation A to substation B. But that, uh, then there is not uh, that's not an issue because in case of phase to phase fault, you generally have three phase stripping and you don't go for auto closure. So phase to phase coupling generally solves all our problems. At the same time, it is not much costlier because uh, if you are using three phase PLCC and if you are using the LMU and Wavetrap in all three phases, definitely it is of much better uh, benefit. But uh, the cost wise, it will be very high. And secondly, uh, the in every utility, they are using the water closure function only for side to ground fault. So if you are using in the two phase coupling, that means you are covering all the ki kinds of fault, you are covering all the conditions, all the situations in which you need the carrier to be transferred from one substation to next substation. Thank you and you will, we will discuss about this in details when we will go for field demonstration. Thank you.